general linear hypothesis testing contrast F test it's your brain and butter baby 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 what's your jam how goes it bio 6611 in this lecture, we're going to introduce and discuss tests of the general linear hypothesis or hypotheses. We'll first introduce what a general linear hypothesis or set of hypotheses are, how to test them, provide an example, and then conclude with a brief mention of contrasts. So introduction to general linear hypotheses. We've previously discussed tests for a single parameter or a group of parameters within a statistical model. For example, a multiple category predictor variable. Now we will learn how to test any linear combination of parameters. In other words, we'll have even further flexibility to test different hypotheses. Now, by definition, a general linear hypothesis or GLH for shorthand you may see in some places is any hypothesis that tests a linear combination of regression parameters. For example, we can see that we might have the hypothesis test here, first of just beta 2 equals 0. That's an example of a test that we can do in a general linear framework. We may have a test of asking if beta 1 is equal to beta 2 by testing beta 1 minus beta 2 equal to 0. We can also test that. We can also test the question if beta 1 equals beta 2 and both are equal to 0 as well. These are all examples of hypotheses that can fit into this general linear framework. Now, these tests can be put into an even more general framework if we lean into using matrices and vectors to represent some of these properties. For example, we may have the null hypothesis of this matrix C times our beta vector is equal to D, where C is going to be an R by P star matrix that is of rank R, where r is less than or equal to p star. Further defining this, r is the number of those linear combinations of parameters that we wish to test. And so that's going to represent our rank of this matrix. p star will be equal to p when an intercept is included in the model. But if we happen to be working with a no intercept model, we'll use p star equal to p minus 1. D is going to represent then an R by 1 vector, and often this is going to be a vector of zeros where we're testing if these different combinations of uh, parameters are equal to zero, but it doesn't necessarily have to be equal to zero. If you have a very specific hypothesis, for example, the combination is equal to a value of 10.3, you can also test that in this framework. So let's look at a few of these examples again that we had in the previous slide. So we can use that general linear hypothesis framework to test just a single parameter that we've already implicitly been doing um, when we're looking at the coefficient table of estimates. So for example, if we're only interested in testing, let's say, beta 2 equal to 0, we would set our matrix here for C to actually just be a row vector, where it's 0, 0, 1 for beta 2, and then 0 for beta 3. Multiply that by our vector of betas and we set that equal to our d vector, which in this case is a single value, just 0, which if we multiply these together really is just the hypothesis that beta 2 equals 0. Likewise, we can actually compare two parameters, perhaps beta 1 minus beta 2, by just expanding and changing that C matrix, or again in our case a vector, and then multiplying them together to see that we have beta 1 minus 2 equals 0, or equivalently, equivalently we're testing the null hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to beta 2. They're the same value. Now one of the interesting things about the general linear hypothesis framework is that we can also simultaneously test multiple values at one time. So for example, if we wish to test the value of beta 1 and beta 3 both being equal to 0 at once, we can set up now our C matrix here to be two rows, and then our four columns, and then our D matrix in this case will just say are both equal to 0. If we multiply this out with our matrices, we see that our null hypothesis is that beta 1 and beta 3, that column vector equals the column vector 0 and 0. Or equivalently, we're simultaneously testing beta 1 is equal to 0 and beta 3 is also 0. And likewise, we can also test the differences or different combinations of parameters as well, where here we see we're going to define our C matrix such that we have 
beta 1 minus beta 2 and beta 1 minus beta 3 being tested simultaneously for both being equal to 0. So let's look at testing a general linear hypothesis next. Now we can actually use the f test to derive a p-value to use this general linear hypothesis we've defined with again with our uh, matrix C and our values we wish to test against D. Now you will note here that this is all written in matrix notation or matrix algebra approach where we have again our matrices and our vectors here for the parameters of estimate as well as our design matrix of our predictors X. Now this can further be reduced to our partial F test for testing a group of variables because we can actually note that this somewhat complicated looking piece of matrix algebra is really equivalent to the sums of square model for a full model minus the sums of square model for a reduced model. Therefore, a test of a single linear hypothesis for a group of variables or a single parameter would further reduce to a t-test and not just the partial f-test. Now let's actually walk through an example of what this might look like. So let's return to our birth weight and smoking data set from the categorical variables lecture where non-smoker is going to be our reference category. So here we see an example with birth weight as an expectation of birth weight is going to be equal to our intercept representing the non-smoker birth weight and then the deviation with respect to birth weight for former smoker, light smoker, and heavy smokers. Now let's say we wish to test the hypothesis with this specific model that heavy and lightweight smokers have the same birth weight. So we might say that beta heavy equals beta light, or equivalently that their difference is equal to zero. We can write this in our general linear hypothesis framework as zero, zero, negative one, and one for the matrix of those contrast coefficients, and then put our beta vector here and set it equal to zero. Let's see an example of how we can actually conduct this general linear hypothesis in R quite easily using the glh.test function from the gmodels package. Now we see at the top chunk of code we did read in our data file and we've defined our potential indicator variables for each of the smoking categories. We've also loaded the gmodels library to be able to use the glh.test function. We then see here in our line of code for the linear model, we're fitting birth weight as our outcome with predictors including indicators for former smoker, light smoker, and heavy smoker during that first trimester. We'll then need to construct the corresponding C matrix to test that general linear hypothesis of interest, and we see doing that here in this next to last line of code. We can then use the glh.test function by specifying the model we fit, the corresponding C matrix, and then what we're testing against. So here we're generically defining it as zero for the number of hypotheses we're testing in C matrix, which in this case happens to be one. Now fitting this model, we see here that we have a general linear test of hypothesis output where we see that there's not a significant difference between the light and the heavy smokers based on what we've defined. We can also demonstrate an example with a simultaneous hypothesis test in this general linear hypothesis framework. Say we wanted to test the hypothesis that beta heavy equals beta light equals zero. Now this could be written here in this framework as a C matrix that has a one in the two different rows, one for corresponding to light smoker and heavy smoker, and then our D matrix or vector here corresponding to values of zero in each case. Again, fortunately, we can actually just leverage this glh.test function where we define now our C matrix to be two rows for each of these hypotheses. And we see that we're testing for that model we fit earlier, with the given C matrix, and the proposed values being equal to zero that we're testing or comparing to. Now, in this case, we see that comparing both the light and the heavy smoker values simultaneously equal to zero, we see that the F test says there is a significant difference in at least one of those hypotheses when tested at the same time, suggesting at least one of them is significantly different from zero. If we're happening to use SAS with PROC reg, we can also similarly test these hypotheses. We see that in the first case we can test uh, the case that light is equal to heavy here with test one, and in the second case we can do the 
equivalent of light equals heavy with both being equal to zero. Now we see here that test one's table is nicely formatted in the SAS output, but it corresponds to the exact same values we got when we did our test in R. And likewise, if we test two tests uh, simultaneously for both light and heavy, both being equal to zero, we get the same p-value less than 0.05 for the f-test here. And so just briefly in closing, I want to introduce the idea of contrasts. Now, contrasts are something we covered historically in Bio 6611 in a little more detail, and we do have additional material and supplemental slides to provide that aren't recorded. But just briefly introducing the idea, these are used to test linear combinations of group means, generally with a cell means model. Now, a general contrast or a linear contrast would be any linear combination of parameters whose coefficients add up to zero. In other words, we see on the slide here, the sum of the CI equals zero. Orthogonal contrasts would be a special set of contrasts that are defined such that for all pairs of those contrasts, the cross products of those coefficients are zero. In other words, multiplying contrast A's ith element by contrast B's ith element and summing everything together will still equal zero under the assumption of equal sample sizes. Orthogonality can be desirable because it removes um, the dependence across these different uh, contrasts or that the model sums of squares can be partitioned into statistically independent sums of squares. Now this is especially useful for a further specialized set of orthogonal polynomial contrasts at the bottom of the slide here. These are ones that can be used to test for polynomial patterns in the data, and because of that removal of the statistical dependence, it's useful because we can now compare maybe a second power, third power, and so on independently and of removing that multicollinearity. Again, we don't cover this in too great of detail because much of what we do in practice can be used uh, with the general linear hypothesis testing framework, but we do provide supplemental material for slides to review to, that digs historically a little more into this topic. And with that, we will move on to discussing other special topics in multiple linear regression.